Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your Should You Buy video on the new Drake Cutter Scout. The Scout, which is available in flight ready now for purchase, is going to cost you $45 war bond, meaning all new money being spent on the ship, or if you'd like to use credits, you have a price of $50. The Cutter Scout is a new variant off of the entry-level offering from Drake in the original Cutter, which sold for a price of $45. So what is the Scout and why is it a little bit more expensive than the OG Cutter? Well, let's dive into it. The Cutter Scout, as the name implies, is a radar-enhanced variant focused on scouting areas out for various purposes. How that works in practicality today is that you will have better range and detection abilities of enemy targets, mineable rocks, wrecks for salvage, or really anything else that your radar would typically pick up. The Scout shares the same dimensions as the original cutter being 20 meters long, 13 wide, 6 tall with a mass of 93,000 kilograms, which is about 7,000 kilograms heavier than the cutter. The cutter is made to support a single player and the scout is the same, where you have a small weapons rack in the cockpit area, a bed in the crew area, along with the, what I lovingly call a shoilet, the shower toilet combo, and then in the rear cargo area is where you primarily feel the difference on the cutter scout, um, as this has an engineering station that's really purposed more for leveraging the radar capabilities. The sacrifice that you make for that enhanced radar is that the cargo ability of this ship is cut in half from the base, so the Scout can only bring two SCU of cargo along, which makes it a little bit less capable in a solo capacity. The enhanced radar that we keep mentioning is actually a size 2 radar, which would really be more expected to be seen on ships like Freelancer sized. Um, and that's going to provide you with longer active scanning radius. So having that significantly larger size um, is a nice bump. And in order to support that, you also have a size 2 power plant, which again, is large for a ship of this size. Another implication of that larger power plant is that you have a larger capacitor charge now, so the DPS from the Scout's weaponry, which matches the base model, is higher because you can fire for longer and recharge faster. With that being said, don't buy into the hype on the stats page, please. <laughs> I kid you not, it claims, and I quote, the Cutter's Stout Weapons Package will never leave you in a tight spot. Well, heck, that sounds awesome. So what are the weapons? two size one bulldogs on gimbals. Okay, but then it's probably gotta have some great missiles then, right? Two size two missiles. So no, it doesn't. And it will probably have one of the lowest DPSs of just about any ship in the game. So please make sure your expectations are set correctly. Aside from the power plant and the radar sizes, the remaining components are all size one as you would expect them to be. So there's not a lot to cover there. Durability-wise, the Cutter and the Scout match at 18,600 total HP with 8,000 for the body and 3,000 for the nose, which actually makes the Cutter Scout a pretty durable little ship with a larger HP than things like the Auroras and the Nomads, which is probably why the mass of the ship is so high. Durability compared to something like a Terrapin is going to be significantly lacking, but that's a much more expensive ship. That mass translates, though, into poor flight performance with a pitch of only 32, a yaw at 32, and a roll, a very measly 130, meaning that while the ship is controllable and balanced, it doesn't respond quickly at all. The range is a little interesting, being better than most fighters and smaller ships, but being lower than the true medium-sized ships, so it has good convenience for a ship that's designed to probably be out in the wild scanning for a little while and trying to find items. The last item to note here is that the Scout has the same ramp and similar spacing in the rear, so something like an STV can uh, fit and be brought on your journey if you would like to bring a vehicle along. Overall, I think that's the rundown of what the Scout is. Um, we already know the cutter, there's the differences, and while there are other details that we could dive into, I think we've hit the important parts. So now that we're uh, at the point where we know what this is and how it's different from the base cutter, you know, should you buy the Scout? Here's the deal. In current state, we don't have different types of radars. There's not a combat radar, or radar, there's not a mining radar, and I don't know if there ever will be. What we do know is that there is a size two radar on this ship. So at least in the current state, if you already have a Cutlass or a Freelancer or a Vanguard or really anything else that's in the mid-size ship category, then you already have a ship that can perform at about the same level as the Cutter Scout can do. So if you're buying for now, you're just throwing extra money at the screen to do something that you can kind of already just do. Now, if you don't already have a larger ship and you're looking for something to supplement with capable radar abilities, then you have a few decisions to make. First off, how much money have you already spent? Because if the answer is around 50 bucks, and let's say you have an Avenger, then you could just either upgrade 
that Avenger <laughs> um, to something like a Cutlass Black, which is going to be a much more capable ship. Um, and I think that's a much more appealing option than just adding a, you know, adding the scout to stand next to your Avenger. So again, for future state, I would prefer to spend the money to upgrade to something else that gets the performance that this can offer, to which I would say this isn't worth the money. The Scout isn't a good fighter. It's not a good cargo hauler. Exploration is barely a thing in the game, um, but that's the one area you kind of see this being helpful and what it's really designed to do. Um, but it just has a lot of gaps um, and not a lot of offerings compared to other ships. Um, what we don't really know is how beneficial that radar station in the rear is going to end up being because many ships don't have that dedicated platform to help do these things. Um, we also don't know if there's going to eventually be something that makes these dedicated radar ships like now the Scout, but the Terrapin and the Hornet Tracker more viable than any other ship. So that could improve the value down the road. I'm assuming we'll see better passive scanning, the focused bands as far as where like directionality of scanning, that sort of thing. Um, and we've seen that alluded to, but it's not really on the roadmap as far as I can see. Uh, and I don't think it's been talked about in a very long time. But at the end of the day, anything that we can plan towards today would be assumptive at best. And in the current state, it just doesn't really add significant value in a way that you couldn't accomplish by doing anything in a different route. The one person that I think should get a yes on this is a very specific persona. The person who has friends that do a lot of salvage or mining. You do not have a ship yet, uh, but you do plan to mostly just support them by scouting areas for their claims. And your budget's at $50. It's about the only person that I think should really consider this ship. You might be able to make an argument too that if you're just kind of kicking the tires on the Terrapin, um, this is a lighter investment to try the gameplay loop. Um, you know, once it's in the game before investing into the true radar scouting recon gameplay loops with a more expensive ship. Um, but even that's kind of a stretch. So I think that's it for now. It's not to hate on the Scout because it's a cool little ship, but I just don't think it's a practical purchase. And if you've got $50 burning a hole in your pocket, I can find a lot of different ways to spend your money. One of those could be supporting the channel on Patreon or through YouTube memberships if you haven't done that yet. So if you appreciate the work, I appreciate the support. Another probably less self-serving way to do that would be to upgrade one of your existing ships into something else, probably waiting until the upcoming sales in November when we get more exclusive ship offerings as they make their return for purchase. And there's a lot of CCUs available at that point. So if you have questions or comments, please get them into the comment section below. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.